Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and we're going to put some more parts on this snapper. Uh, first, while my water is still warm, I just warmed it up, I'm going to put the lip seals in these dust caps. I have two different sides. This is for the differential side and this one is for the left side or chain case side, whatever you want to call it. And this tool I made for adjusting the uh, needle bearings in the chain case also works perfectly to push these into the boots. We're going to throw that one in and warm it up. Let me spin you a little bit here. Um, you could use a socket. I have, an, I think, an inch and a quarter socket that fits in here without hitting the rubber. But the body of the socket is too big around to get down inside of the boot. So I'm not sure if that would work or not. But for me, this works pretty good. Whew, that's a little warm. Warm that up for a minute or two and it gets very pliable. Just don't let it sit too long before you try to get the seal in there. And this one does not want to go down in there. Got it in, but it's off center a little bit from the hole. Not too bad. We'll throw it back in and warm it back up. See if we can get that a little better centered. right down in there. As long as we got that letting this warm up a little bit more, we're going to stick this on the machine. There's that one. Now we'll see if this is warmed up enough to get it down in there the way I'd like it to be. I mean, it is in there. It's just that it's off center a little bit. Getting better. There. I don't want to get too rough with this one especially because <laughs> you can't buy them anymore. Just got to be careful and take your time and work this on here. I might have to throw it back in the hot water. Yep, there we go. Oh, you didn't see much, sorry. Just got to take your finger and stretch it out and get it up over that lip. How's the other one? Oh, we got it on the bottom. And we'll put the clamp on it.
All right. Now we're going to try to get the, and get rid of this before I spill it. We're going to put the uh, clutch disc assembly on. I get a lot of people tell me, I put this new clutch disc on my assembly and it slips. It doesn't grab and it wobbles around. It's supposed to be that way. I'm going to slide this thing a little closer. And maybe you can see what I'm doing. Let me drop this down a little. Well, my bar wasn't in the way. You could see really good. Why don't we just get that out of the way? Now, if yours is bent and you want to replace it with one of these, I do sell them. And you don't want to take your fenders off and mess with this, but you got to get your old one out. The easiest way to do it is take a hacksaw, cut the bar on an angle, and then you can pull them away from each other and you can pull them out without messing with the fenders. And mine is made so you can just slide it in and you don't have to take the fender off. Now let's see if we can get, get you so you can see what's going on here. Let me turn this thing on. That's a little brighter. Now the first thing you want to put on is one of your washers, the cup shape washer. You want to put it on with the cup side out. Put that on first. Then you want to put your Woodruff key in the slot. You can't get the washer on or off if the key is in there. Now we got to press it down in there. That looks pretty good. Now we gotta slide this on. Now you wanna be careful when you slide this on. I've had a lot of people get a hold of me and say, Jim, I got this all put together and when I put the nut on it, locks up the drivetrain. What is going on? This key fits pretty tight in the keyway. But I myself have had some that fit very loose. And when you go to slide this on, it will hit that key and roll it up halfway out of the hole. Then when you bolt this together, it pinches the key between the assembly, let me turn it, between the assembly and the inner race of the bearing, and it'll lock it right up. So you want to watch that when you slide that in. Get yourself a flashlight or something. And if it does want to rotate on you, the easiest way I have found to take care of that is you get a skinny screwdriver and you put it in here and you hold down on the back side of the key. That way when you slide it in, it won't roll up out of the hole. This one's pretty tight. Next, you got another Belleville washer. These are lock washers. That's why they're cup shaped. When you tighten up the nut, it flattens these out 
and if the nut starts to back off a little bit, the spring tension in these washers keep everything tight. And some of these will have two on, some have one. I think it's just at the factory when they're putting it together, they're pretty much on a time, time frame to get these things out and they stick together. So they just stick them on, they don't worry about it. The nut that goes on here is a self-locking nut. The best way I found to put that on is uh, with a, a air impact ratchet. I don't know how many people are going to have one of those. Uh, I have a small one and that will not do the trick. You need a large impact to do that. That nut's got to be on there tight. The one I use It's a half-inch drive air ratchet. <laughs> that thing is a monster. I tried to sell it for a while. I This is Ingersoll Rand, and it, it is, what do they call They sell these at Granger for, you're not going to believe me if I tell you. Here is a quote that I got right from Granger. I don't know why there's this one, I believe. I don't know which one it is. I've got two of them. One's a quarter inch and one's a half inch drive. This one is $2,208. No, I'm sorry, the quarter inch drive one is. This one is $2,499. I went to, it wasn't really an auction. The people got a hold of me and said they were selling some air equipment. And I went there and I looked at it and they said, we want. 50 bucks for this whole box of hoses. I said, well, I can always use hoses for 50 bucks. There's a lot of hoses in there. So I bought it. And it was a four foot square tub about a quarter of the way full. So I loaded all this stuff in my, all these hoses in my truck. When I got to the bottom, there was a box in there that had these in it and about six air um, like screwdrivers or air drills and I said something to the woman she said hey it was in the box it's yours so I took them home but this fits right up in there because of the way the neck is made I don't know if you can see because it's so short you move this thing over it fits right in there and spins that thing right on I called uh, somebody, I think I might have talked to Granger about them, and he says, these are pretty much indestructible. He said, the only way you can hurt one of these is when you're impacting with it to try to tighten it. Then you use it as a ratchet at the same time. He says, you'll strip the gears in the head. So I'm not going to do that because I'll never get another one of them. Now we're going to put on, let me move the camera again, race it up. I wish I had somebody that did the camera work. This is the shift plate and shift handle off this machine. And as you can see, these things are wore right off. And he's got the 
The back side of it is pretty much all wore out, gouged up. Apparently did a lot of shifting. And the handle, get it around here so you can see it. He's got that just about, I've seen them where they'll break right in half. And they've sent them to me and I've welded them all up and ground them down and painted them. They come out pretty nice. But I have another shift handle that's in real good shape. You can see all of these, all the detents are almost perfect. So we're going to put this on, but I have to get it apart. I want to um, clean it and put new bushings inside of here, which I've ordered for this thing. And these slots, <clears throat> this shift handles has slots in it, so you can move that. That's for adjustment on the chain case. And when I get to that point, I will show you how to adjust that. Now another thing I want to do to this shift handle, where this one... I took the parts out of this one already. I'll probably put these guts in the shift handle when I get it apart. This one's on pretty much cleaned up and it has a grease fitting in it. This one does not. Now to get that out of there safely, wish I could lift this a little more. Maybe I will. Hang on. We're going to give you an aerial view of the shop. Now, I made a tool for removing or compressing this spring to get it out of here. It's laying here somewhere. Was laying here somewhere. What did I do with it? Boy, don't you hate when stuff just disappears? Here it is. This is a um, spring compressor I came up with, and it works pretty good. Now, if you have one of these that has a grease fitting, you have to use this end that fits over the grease fitting. Otherwise, you're going to crush it and it won't accept grease anymore. If you don't have a grease fitting, you have to drill a small hole in the center of this because this has a point on it and it will go in that hole that you drilled. Otherwise, if you try to turn this, all it's going to do is walk around on this flat surface and slip off. So let me get a drill and I'm going to poke a small hole in there. I'll be right back. Now, it doesn't have to be very deep. It's just got to be deep enough for that point to go into. So we're just going to drill a small hole in here. And it doesn't have to be exactly on center. Somewhere close. That's all we need. I used a center drill and I went in deep enough to get to taper. This, that's what this is. It's a tapered point that matches that center drill hole. And now we just got to tighten this up till this piece of angle iron hits the inside of this housing. And we're just going to throw a clamp on it. 
This is definitely a three-handed job. And we're going to tighten it up. Works very well. Does look a little rusty. I'm glad I'm taking it apart. Now we gotta straighten out this cutter key. Pull that out. Sometimes you'll have a awful time trying to get that pin out of there. I've got one over there I can't drive out. I'm going to have to mill it out, I guess. We'll see if this one comes out. <laughs> this one does not want to come out either. Rust washer does not want to move over. Might still have some tension on it. We may have to oil this up and let it sit for a while. It's totally loose. You may want to plug your ears. Yep, we're going to have to oil that baby because it is not wanting to come out. I'll squirt some WD-40 in there. And we're going to have to let that sit. Now what else can we do to this? we got to put the front end on. And that I already have completely rebuilt. All the, the bushings, kingpin, tie rods, steering, all them plastic bushings have been changed. The only thing I have to do yet is put the new bearings in the tires and get the tires back on. And I got the new bearings and these are not the three dollar ones that come from tractor supply or harbor freight they are just a sheet metal stamping and the races are not ground or just they're all stamped these are actual ball bearing and uh, i figure for all the weight that's on the front end of this thing you're going to need some good bearings, and you're, you're going to want to keep your eye on them and change them when they need changing. Because this front end has about 75 pounds of steel weight to offset the weight of the clamshell bagger hanging on the back of this machine. So, I guess... We're going to have a short video today. I got to get the tires and rims cleaned up and the bearings out. They come out very easy. Uh, maybe I'll knock one out on in the video and see how things are going. And that's about it for now. I do have another video to make as soon as I stop this one because today is the 24th 
of Mar March, and you know what that means. Today is the drawing for the Haichika for the Haichika hot air gun. All this stuff I do reviews on, I give away. And I do it on a video. You have to send me your name and phone number. I'll call you, and that way everybody knows I actually give this stuff away. So till next time, work safe, have fun. Keep your fingers crossed if you turned your name in for this drawing, because I will be calling you in about 10 minutes. And we'll talk to you soon. So long.